Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. apprehension of persons suspected of a crime, the Highway Patrol is concerned with obtaining evidence, evidence that will prove those persons innocent or guilty. In the trial of murder suspect George Crenshaw, the evidence seemed to indicate guilty, until a young artist named Molly Weems headed for the office of the Highway Patrol to give new information concerning the murder of which Crenshaw was accused. Citations for double parking. I'm a police reporter, remember? I'm looking for news. Sorry, Joe. I don't know. Every day there's murder, robbery, hijacking. But when I come on duty, crime takes a holiday. Maybe you should join the patrol. Yeah, that's what my editor's beginning to think. Yes, ma'am. I do. Uh... I'd like to speak with the officer in charge, please. That would be Mr. Matthews. Maybe I could help you. Well, it's, it's important. Very important. Would you like to tell me what it's about? It's about George Crenshaw. He didn't commit those murders. They can't convict him at that trial. I saw the man who killed those people. It wasn't George Crenshaw. Would you give me your name, please? Weems. Molly Weems. One moment, Miss Weems. I think you should see Mr. Matthews. Thank you. Excuse me, Miss Weems. I'm Joe Macklin of the Chronicle. I couldn't help overhearing. Please. I just want to talk with Mr. Matthews about this. Why Matthews? Why don't you want to go to the district attorney? I don't know. I, I live pretty far out in, in Sunrise Park. The highway patrol covers that area. I see. Miss Weems, I'm Matthews. Won't you come in, please? Dan. I'll see you later. Can I talk to them for a minute? Sorry, Joe, not now. Look, I've got a deadline in about 20 minutes. Just give me something I can phone in. There's nothing I can give you. You heard her. She said that Crenshaw didn't kill those people. She saw somebody else do it. She could be wrong. Yeah, but if she isn't wrong, I lose out on the news beat. Oh, look, come on. I can get a photographer down here in five minutes. At least let me get some pictures before deadline time. No pictures. Not without permission. Well, Matthews is right in his office. Can't we get permission? You know better than that, Joe. He's questioning a witness. Okay. That Crenshaw trial is big news. It's been big news for weeks. It looks like a sure conviction. Just let me get something. Sorry, Joe. Not now. I tell you, Mr. Matthews, I saw the real killer. It wasn't George Crenshaw. I know it wasn't. Can you describe this man? Yes, I can. The murders were committed six weeks ago, at night. There was a moon. It, it was bright enough for me to get a good look at him. Did he happen to see you? Yes. I must have cried out or, or made some kind of a noise because he turned and shouted at me. He even shot at me. But I ducked through the trees and ran. I, I thought I'd lost him, but he must have followed me. You saw a man commit two murders and did nothing about it. I was going to. When I got home, I was too sick, too frightened from what I'd seen. A few hours later, there was a news broadcast that said the killer had been arrested. Did you know it was the wrong man? No. I didn't know till the next morning when I saw the picture in the paper. George Crenshaw's picture. It wasn't the same man I'd seen in the park. You still did nothing about it? I was afraid. Too afraid. I, I started getting calls, threats. He even sent me threatening notes. I, I got one almost every day. Do you happen to have any of them? Oh, no. I, I burned them. I didn't want anyone to know I could identify a killer who was still at large. Mr. Matthews, I, I know I was wrong, but ever since the trial began, I've been getting those calls, those letters. I can't sleep, can't eat, can't think straight. You've got to believe me. Tell me, what made you stop being afraid? What made you decide to tell us the whole story? If George Crenshaw is convicted, he'll be sentenced to death. He's innocent, Mr. Matthews. 
He's not a killer. Not a killer? Or not the killer? Don't try to trap me or, or trick me into thinking I've said the wrong thing. Now, please don't do that to me. Mr. Matthews, I'm not crazy. I'm not some crank or, or a giddy female looking for publicity. I'm trying to save the courts from executing the wrong man. George Crenshaw didn't kill those people in Sunrise Park. I can describe the real murderer. You must believe that. Well, excuse me, won't you? Kari, run a check on the Weems girl. Where she's from, how she lives, where she lives, who her friends are. Also, get me a record of the Crenshaw trial, will you? Well, I want some mug shots and brief the DA on this. Right. Think she's telling the truth? If she's not, she's going to a lot of trouble for a phony story. And so are we. Desk. Yeah, make it fast. Harry Macklin. Something's breaking on the Crenshaw case again. Take this down, will you? Ready? Okay. With the jury still contemplating the fate of George Crenshaw, an attractive mystery girl identified as Molly Weems at Weems, W-E-E-M-S, 1233 Sunrise Drive. Yeah, Sunrise Drive. Appeared at Highway Patrol headquarters this morning to claim that Crenshaw was innocent of the killings for which he was on trial. You got that? Okay, now here's some more. While Joe Macklin relayed his story to the Daily Chronicle, the Highway Patrol worked to authenticate Molly Weems' story. Every statement she made was noted and compared with the evidence established at the Crenshaw trial. Her description of the killer was checked against the mugshots of known criminals. When she could not identify any of the photos, it was arranged for her to testify before the district attorney. See you better, Mr. Matthews. Well, the DA's expecting us. We're late now. This may save you a trip. Excuse me. Hi. 3040 just checked in. They've been questioning Miss Weaves' landlord. What'd they find out? She's only lived on Sunrise Drive about five months. Her hometown is North Winston. North Winston? You've heard of it, all right. It's George Crenshaw's hometown, too. Well, that's only a whistle stop. Two or three hundred people. Small enough for them to have been neighbors or good friends. Well, if she's protecting Crenshaw in this way, they must have been more than good friends. All right, Miss Williams, out. I thought we were seeing a district attorney. He'll be here soon enough when he finds out about the lies you've been telling. Lies? You've done a good job. You almost had me convinced. Why are you so determined to prove I'm a liar? Why don't you believe me? Well, for one thing, you said the moonlight helped you spot the killer. Court records show there was no moon that night. All right, there wasn't a moon. I was witnessing a, a double murder I expected to give weather reports to. All I know is I saw the man who killed those people, and it wasn't George Crenshaw. How long have you known Crenshaw? I don't know him. I told you that. When you were neighbors back in North Winston, you probably went to school dances together. I don't know why you're doing this, but Miss Williams, you're protecting a killer. No, no, George isn't a killer. He wouldn't kill anyone. George? All right, why don't you tell me the truth? All right, I was lying. And the reason is the same one you've probably heard a thousand times before. I love him. Three years ago, George and I were going to be married, but I broke the engagement. George moved away from North Winston. He's too proud, too stupid to stop him. Go on. A few months ago, I moved to Sunrise Park. I had no idea George was living there, too. I'd forgotten him, lost track of him. But then I, I read about the murders and the trial. I couldn't believe any of it. George isn't a killer. I kept telling myself they were wrong. They had to be wrong. George couldn't kill anyone. There was nothing I could do for him during the trial. I just stood aside, reading about it, watching the evidence pile up against him, knowing they were wrong. They had to be wrong. Then the case came before the jury. All that evidence against him. I had to show them they were wrong. I couldn't let him die. Do you understand, Mr. Matthews, that I couldn't let him die? All right, Corey. You can take her home now. 
I'm all right now. I'll be able to drive. You sure? We don't want any accidents. I'll be careful, thank you. I'm terribly sorry for making such a fool of myself, Mr. Matthews. Are you going to file charges? You signed no statements. There's nothing we can hold you on. Would you do me a favor? Go home now, please. That's the Weems girl, isn't it? Where's she going? Home. Oh. You gonna let her run around unguarded with a killer at large? There's no killer. She was lying. Lying? It's a good thing she was lying. It's a good thing other reporters don't have your lack of responsibility. Otherwise, the only witnesses we have would be dead ones. What? The story you printed. You gave her name and address. If there had been a killer, the only thing you didn't do for him was load the gun. Honest, Dan, I, I never even thought I... Let's go. Hey, Dan, wait a minute, listen. had admitted her story was false, reporter Joe Macklin drove to her house for an interview. It was he who found her, the victim of a murder attempt. Stay right here. I'll, I'll get an ambulance. Within 20 minutes, Molly Weems was on her way to the hospital, and the highway patrol was investigating the shooting. Where'd you find her, Joe? She'd fallen just about here, Dan. She was facing this way. When I drove up, she was just coming, too. Well, the shot must have come from that direction. Corey, get some men out here. Have them check the area for tire tracks, footprints, anything, anything. Yes. Might have been a wild shot, Dan, from a hunter's rifle. Sure. Hunting for Molly Williams. Why? Why would anyone want to kill her? Because she could identify the killer. You told me she never saw any killer, that she was lying. Sure, she was lying. But only you and I know that. Hey, wait a minute, Dan. The way you phrase it, you seem to think that Molly was telling the truth and didn't realize it. Starting to look that way. But if that's the case, then the real Sunrise Park killer is at large, and Crenshaw is innocent. Hey, that's a big story, Dan. Will you give me a statement on it? No, Joe, not yet, but very soon. When? Sooner than you think. The bullet that might have killed Molly Weems was identified as a 30-30 rifle slug, but there was no direct lead to the owner of that rifle. The area from which the rifle had been fired was examined carefully, but no leads were found. The victim herself could offer no clues to the identity of the would-be murderer. Well, he didn't do a very good job on me. The doctor says I only have to stay here overnight. I'd like to have you stay here a little longer. I've talked to the doctor about it. Well, if it isn't necessary. I'm afraid it is necessary. I'd like permission to move into your home because I think you're going to receive a visitor. I'd like to be there when he arrives. What are you building, Dan? The story that you want. Oh? All right, you can print that the Highway Patrol says the shooting of Molly Weems was a deliberate attempt to silence a material witness. And while we're investigating the shooting, Miss Weems is being kept under guard at her home. At her home. When her condition improves, she's expected to offer a detailed description of the man who she believes to be the real Sunrise Park killer. Until then, no further action can be taken on the testimony she's given to date. It wasn't long before the story took effect. While the highway patrol waited, the man who shot Molly Weems made his way to her house, his second visit to the area in two days. 
but this time his visit was no surprise. The patrol had installed a radio in the Weems house where Matthews, staked out, could control and direct his units. That's right. You got a press cut? Sure. Who are you? A brand new member of the fourth estate. Get out. Come on. Get over by that tree. Got it. Come over there. Get up here. Turn around. While Macklin was being subdued, Sergeant Corey, who was stationed outside the Weems house, reported to Matthews that all was quiet, that the undercover cars concealed in the Sunrise Park area had nothing to report. I'll stand by. Can't be quiet forever. Hi. Right, one minute. Mind if I ask what you're doing here? You with the Chronicle? That's right. Where's Joe Macklin? He usually covers the police beat in this area. Well, well Joe, uh, he's on another assignment. You know, feature stuff. What's your name? Uh, Reagan, Ralph Reagan. Your press card just refers to the bearer. There's no name on it. Oh, well, you know, some are like that, some are non-transferable, and others, well, they're just... I know that, but I'll have to have further identification if you don't mind. Oh, well, sure. Uh... That's all right. One minute. I have to clear all visitors. What do you mean, clear? Regulations. Just take a minute. 3822 to 2150. 2150. I have a reporter here named Reagan from the Chronicle. What about the other guy, that uh, Joe Macklin? He says he's on another assignment. You know this guy, Reagan? No. He has one of those transferable press cards, but his ID checks out. I think he's OK. All right, send him in. Good evening, Mr. Reagan. Well, thanks a lot. Sit down, Reagan, sit down. Nice to have somebody to talk to. What do you say to a cigarette? Thanks. My, my first story, I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of nervous. I'm not used to this police beat. Oh, I see, here. Try again. Thanks. Nothing to be nervous about. I suppose Macklin's brief to you on the whole story. Uh, no, no, he hasn't. Uh, you see, I, I was sort of a last-minute replacement. Well, well look, if Miss Weems isn't going to be here, I don't want to bother you anymore. Well, Joe, right, sit down and enjoy your cigarette, kid. Did you expect to find her here? Uh, I told you, I wasn't filled in on this story at all. In fact, this is my first outside of sun. Oh, I see. Hey! Give me a hand, will you? What happened, Joe? Some guy stopped my car and clobbered me with a gun butt. Must have been the back end of a howitzer. Come on. Oh, look, if I can't interview Miss Williams, I'd better get moving now. Sorry to bother you. Oh, no bother at all. Oh, by the way, say hello to Joe for me, will you? Oh, oh, oh Joe, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, see you. Uh, see you. That girl didn't uh, identify the killer yet, did she? No. No, not yet. Uh, do you think she's on the level? Why? Shouldn't she be? Oh, I don't know. I, I figured what with Crenshaw almost convicted. It seemed kind of funny, you know. Oh? What's funny? Let's just bust right in there and get that bum. No, if he has Dan at gunpoint, he would just force him to shoot. Look, he couldn't have known Dan was in there. Chances are he's trying to make a graceful exit right now. We've got to let Dan know who he is. Sure. Let's send him a singing telegram. I've got a better way than that. 3822 to 2150. Excuse me. Look, I better keep going. 2150. I've got a message from headquarters for that reporter. What message? I've got a message for that reporter from headquarters. Stay where you are, will you? 
All right, let's have it. Uh, look, I can get it outside. Oh, please, stay where you are. All right, give me, give me the message. About those news pictures that were taken of the witness in the Crenshaw case. What pictures? The ones that were taken before she was shot. Headquarters wants to approve them before they're printed. Ask him if they're ready yet. You sure? Yes, sir. Thanks. Did you see some pictures that were taken of Miss Molly Williams? No, no, I don't. Well, these are pictures that were taken, well, they were taken before she was shot. Oh, oh no, sh sure, I heard about those pics. I uh, they were pretty good. Did you get a chance to look at them? Well, uh, they weren't finished, but I heard the photographers talking about them. Well, we'd like to locate them before they're published. Oh, sure thing. I'll tell the boss. All right, fine. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh, see you later. Right. All right, hold it, your phony. Get your hands up. Put them on top of your head. Move over here. Start moving out. Come on. Right now. Newspaper, man. Give me my card. Oh, look at this little beauty. Oh, that's pretty. You could have done a nice, quiet job on Miss Williams with us. Better than your Sunrise Park job. How'd she know? How'd that Williams Day know it was me in the park? She didn't. She couldn't identify you. She could. And who did? You did. Move. <laughs> 